Hey, what's up, grinders? I am Zard, and this is Gems of War. It's time for your weekly PvP dose, but before we hop into the action, I wanna apologize for the last week. Uh, around Wednesday time, uh, Wednesday reset time last week, there was a uh, restriction reset, and I simply couldn't find time to record another PvP video with the uh, update restrictions. So, sorry for that, but uh, that's how my life these days are. Anyway, now let's hop into the action, and we start from the Bay of Stars. More Grim Woods restriction, and this is not very easy or mm, fun in general. But um, anyway, here is the team I prefer here. Plenty of different solutions, really. For example, this is one of one good way. Inori, empowered and converts green gems to spirit gems. Can mana train the enemy. And a tracker, mana generator, wolf girl can uh, kill two enemies at one cost, etc. etc. But uh, we are going with this route. Kind of a skull team, but kind of a spell damage team as well. In the top slot, we are using a timber wolf uh, who explodes brown gems, gains some armor as well. And uh, has, has skull reduction and can also uh, dodge skull damage. Uh, Coronas, uh, Hellgate, Faction Troop, uh, Explode Purple Gems, right? Then we're using Doomed Clave. Uh, this is a Paul Orm mm, Doomed Weapon. Deals magic plus 3 damage to all enemies and plus 1 per tempering level. Then converts Brown Gems to Doom Skulls. Um, yeah, deals skull damage. Deals spell, AOE spell damage and can also uh, entangle the top enemy because it has this uh, tangling upgrade over here. Uh, conjures a leaf storm when you cast the weapon and drains two mana from green enemies as well if you have this weapon maxed. Right? And in the last slot, we are using Hatter and Scroll Mythic Troop. Converts all green gems to lycanthropy gems and all yellow gems to doom skulls. And if you lose troops, can summon a winter wolf or work. Version elementalist class. So if you lose uh, troops, this hatter and scroll, if it does summon a winter wolf, that troop will deal double skull damage to frozen enemies. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, you might be a little bit worried about those lycanthropy gems, but Again, you can explode all purple gems, and that means those lycanthropy gems as well with this Kronos. Uh, I think this works just fine in the Kristen Hall if you are rooting for the yellow magic or the magic for your yellow allies, so to speak. Um, of course, Hope, Crescent, and Wolf Kirk pairs pretty well too. It's really all about how you generate mana to your troops, and that's why I prefer to use two of these exploders here in the top two positions. Blood Frenzy is active in this region today, and uh, let's try how we fare against um, Fergie Argentina. Fergie Argentina. Fer X I Argentina. Well, anyway. Okay, we're frozen on green, that's fine. We can take. Excuse me, we aren't frozen on green, so we can take this. I suppose we are going to take this. Now we could explode the board. I would really prefer the enemy in Ari to cast first. Maybe we could do that actually. There's no green to uh, blue alignment at all. So if we do this. No, they are still are not going to uh, cast their in Ari. I suppose we just go and explore the board then and start the spamming process then. And of course now they are going to cast Inari anytime soon. Let's do that. Do we have an extra turn? Yes we do. Okay, okay, okay. And there's our Doomed Clave alignment which we are totally going to do. And when you cast the Doomed Clave you are going to conjure the Green Storm which will help with a Hot and Scroll. Uh, alignments because all green gems are going to convert it to lycanthropy gems like this over here so we can do that generate some skulls on the board we do this skull poke and a green uh, five match mm, we are going to do this 
Yellows to skulls, purples to green. I think we don't have an extra turn anywhere, so I suppose we are going to explode brown gems. Do we have... no? Little bit slow going, there's our extra turn, so now we cast our Hydra scroll. Doing the skull damage over there. Uh, we do that. Glaive alignment, no. Yellows to skulls, no. But again, there's the green to purple. There's our glaive alignment now. We do that. And now is the hard part. Because wolf Cork is impervious, we cannot entangle them. So now we could have uh, concentrate a little bit more. There's our extra turn with Hutter and Scroll. We do that. Little skull poking over there, and that's a match. Slow going, but hey, hey it, it gets the job done in most fights. Moving on to Winter's Reach with Fey Restriction. Uh, plenty of Fey Restriction recently, and uh, we are using the same team as we most of times use. One of Stars up top, King of Ravens, very good troop. Murder of Ravens converts two blue gems to spirit gems when my turn begins. And this troop explodes all purple gems and spirit gems. Then deals magic plus three damage to the last two enemies, boost by spirit gems on the board with boost ratio times six. Uh, Song of Darkness summons a dark storm at the start of the battle. Kind of helps getting King of Ravens going and your Asuna going. Of course, any storm with Wand of Stars is good. Uh, but we, of course, we would prefer some other storm than purple or yellow. But hey, yo, can't get everything, really. Asuna, uh, uh, Sunfire Fairy fires a random enemy when matching red gems, and this troop steals magic plus three life from the two weakest enemies, and then steals eight magic from two strongest enemies. The more you cast Asuna, the more power powerful she will uh, turn. A uh, leprechaun gets things going. Let's try how we fare against McLean. So they're using row one, so we really want to get some uh, damage on her uh, to uh, diminish their armor. And there's uh, those spirit gems. This is very useful. Now we can just explode the board and mana train the enemy. Uh, we are going to mana train four uh, mana points when we explode leprechaun and those green gems and those spirit gems. Red. I think we are going to cast our Wand of Stars. Then we proceed with Suna. After we have picked all those extra turns. Right, and then we go with cast Wand of Stars red. Now we are going to proceed with the mana um, mana train when we cast this King of Ravens there. And our uh, Roman doesn't have any armor anymore. I think we are going to do this. I was hoping for a skull alignment like that. And uh, then we could do spell damage to there. And just get rid of the last enemy. And of course we are using, by the way, Elementalist. It's the best class for PvP for sure. This is a match. There. Amazing. Moving on to Edenia with brown restriction. Again, same thing as last week. I don't care to play this anymore. You use whatever brown teams you prefer. This is one option and this is one option. What I prefer though is the silence for real. As you have to fight Wand of Stars and Stellarix teams a lot in these regions, it's very handy to be able to silence them and uh, then spam your Wand of Stars. If you miss, no biggie. They aren't going to get any mana. Just random skull pokes and that's it. Suitstayer gets things going and uh, etc etc. You know this trick. We aren't going to play here, we are going to move to on another uh, region. And the another region is Ancient Cat with Construct Restriction. Uh, we... Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, yeah, this is an option, for real. Uh, mana Generator and three of these uh, Guardian uh, Constructs. Um, this uh, enemy is preferring Treachery. And this one likes Defiance, and this one likes Rage River and Ferocity. Uh, we're going to play against this opponent. I think it has, has the more mo most VP. So we are going to enter the battle with Jernabok up top, Conjure Shade Dust Storm when my turn begins, reduces damage from skulls by 50% and creates um, 10 brown gems and explodes Magic plus one of those uh, gems. Um, the Empress, I think you know this troop. 
and gives magic plus one to all skills on the last ally. And there is 7% chance on, uh, of an extra turn for each green gem on the board. And the good tarot trait grants a random status effect to a random ally when you cast spells. Theodore Witch. Holiday Wish creates a wish gem when my turn begins. That's the thing what we are using, but if you lose troops, you can summon replacements and give a little bit of mana to your troops your troops as well. And in the last position we're seeing the Rupee Macaque. Deals magic plus 2 true damage to all enemies, then creates 3 booty gems and explodes 5 gems. We're using a Geomancer class to give all construct allies a 50% start, uh, so that we get the Jernobog spamming going faster. If you don't have the Rupee Macaque, one option is to replace Theodore Rich with Aries, and you could replace um, your Rupee Macaque with Wand of Stars. But keep in mind though, that when you do uh, some kind of um, mixing here in the troop lineup, remember to put your spell damage troop in the last position, because again Empress gives the skills on the last ally. But yeah, Arias is going to get the job done for sure. But we'd write this uh, Rupee team over here. <coughs> Excuse me about that. Okay, so we want to get browns or purples to get our Jernibok going. We can take this and we can give actually the boost to our Rupee like that. And we got the extra turn and now we just generate mana to our, to our troops. Is this enough? It is a single wipe there. Right. Geron with red restriction this week. Uh, same thing as, as in the brown region. Not going to play over here, just going to say that I prefer the silence again and we bring Merlion for that. He deals magic plus 2 damage to an enemy and a random enemy. If they are silenced, uh, he will deal double damage. If they aren't silenced, he will silence them. So you can silence two troops. Of course, you are going to target this on the Wand of Stars, and then uh, there is going to be a silence for a uh, random troop from these three. Right, and we're using Gimlet to get things a little bit faster going. Red region, you can use Tesla, you can use Jewel God, you can use Taxaka, whatever tickles your nipples, man. Use that. A broken Lands with Karakot restriction. I think this is the first time we see Karakot over here. And uh, it's not very fun, really. Um, we can use Jewel God, that's the good news. The bad news is that we really don't have any solid way to generate mana, so we have to get creative. Green Slime in the first position uh, creates 5 green gems, and then turns all green gems to purple to feed Jewel God. You get a little bit of uh, some points to a random skill as well. Uh, Nature Link against bonus green mana from green gem matches. That's why we are using this brown, uh, excuse me, purple, brown, and minus green banner. It doesn't matter if we have minus green because that is going to be replaced with this uh, Nature Link. So it's uh, plus minus zero uh, trick over here. Um, Dark Troll doubles the number of purple on the board, right? then it creates three purple gems. One of these uh, trolls, a pretty okay mana generator. If you like, you can uh, slot this in the top position because of the dead touch trait inflicts dead mark when doing skull damage. But uh, I prefer to use dark troll over here in case we lose troops. We don't have any summon summoning options over here unless actually... Uh, actually we do. Uh, stuff of the other worlds. This is one of these uh, kingdom generator weapons. And there is a impish, yeah, 10% chance to summon a Quasit. That's is that's a trash troop, but a meat shield is a meat shield when things are going to uh, going bad. Let's say that powerful gains four mana. That's nice upgrade, really, especially if the weapon is an exploder. However, this isn't. Uh, this weapon deals magic plus seven damage to an enemy boost by Karakot allies. Then creates a mix of six purple and brown gems for each Karakot ally. Because we are using Elementalist, we are only going to create 18 gems, not the maximum amount, but um, it kind of works in various ways. You can generate straight mana, or you can generate browns to your dart roll, or you can create purples on the board, then double them up with green slime or dart roll. The main goal here is to get Zulgot going one way or another. What is this weapon? Emerald Genser. Alright, this is one of these. Mm, 
a journey weapons, I think. Anyway, let's do do a test run. Eldritch Guardian. Actually, I want I want to talk about one thing. I think it is it is this Arima. Yeah, um, this is one of these siege breaker troops, and uh, when you cast this, the usual stuff happens. But then this troop will eliminate magic plus four from two random skills. So basically, if they have a uh, spell. Uh, spell a damage troop, for example, something that deals AoE damage, you could target them with this Arimas and maybe you could eliminate a hefty amount of their magic. So this is something to keep in mind if you are a new player and want to try here in the Karakult. But anyway, we are going with this route and let's see how we fare. So you gotta get your troll or your weapon or your uh, green slime up top going. I think we are going to pick this blue, maybe get green slime going, or actually, do we have 8 is not enough, you really want to have maybe 11, 12, and so on, so on, so we are going to do first this, now we are going to double up the purples, let's see if we get any mana from there, we did it very well, and we are actually giving some extra turns, but that's where the elementalist comes handy, their purple troops are frozen, now we are going to double up these 12 purple gems and maybe we get an extra turn like that. Yeah, let's do those. And we do that too. Now we are going to proceed with their... Oh, there are still the... Oh, well, let's do a cast over there. We get rid of their top tank. How's the purples? Eight. Okay, we are going to do this. Eight is not good. We are going to cast this weapon to generate more of those purple gems. Right, 8, still not good. Maybe we do this. A mana source would be nice. We do this. We do this again. Maybe we get Zulga going now. And now this is a match there. Uh, I would really avoid this region for sure this week. Not very good, even if you can use Jewel Gold. But hey, if you have a nice Karakot team, please let me know in the comments. Really? For real, man? Let me know. It uh, next in line is a Samurai with Suncrest restrictions. Woohoo! Okay, I really don't like these too much, but um, I think this... Uh, Troop combination is working somewhat um, fast and effective. Uh, Mark is using Acris up to uh, a tricky bastard. Uh, Eagle Eye places Hunter's Mark on enemies when doing skull damage. This is a nasty trait, so we might lose our Harp image pretty quickly, but that's fine because Queen Joshi has a Stormflock trait that has a 35% chance to summon another Harp image when matching extra turns. Very, very good trade as long as she isn't stunned. They aren't using Elementalist, they're using Stormcaller, so we aren't going to get stunned very easily. So, I think this is going to go just fine. We can summon Harp image, uh, we can summon another Strix troop, explode uh, gems with Harp image and stuff of storms and deal AoE damage with Queen Chotzi and High Priest Zaska. And again, Zaska can also bless all the yellow allies if you get those nasty status effect. Also, she conjures a light storm when my turn begins. No need for a storm caller when you're using High Priest Zaska in your team. Let's try how we fare against Mark Curly. And that nasty Ekrix up top over there. Blade Wing is not again to, uh, can uh, kill one of your en enemies. A mini Zul God, so to speak. I really want to take uh, this. Hopefully, we aren't. Oh, uh, yeah, we are definitely going to get Skull Boat over there. That's fine. We're going to take those. I think I'm going to explode yellows or reds. So I cast Harpy Mage on ourselves. We are going to die anytime soon. Mm, we could take this, get mana to our Harpy Mage and do a Skull Poke, but uh, let's do this. We are going to deal AoE damage and explode 5 gems as well. Uh oh. And Harpy Mage gone. No biggie. We do this for some protection, of course. We could take... Uh, let me see. We do this. 
to do that. Okay, and the Regress is entangled, and actually it is gone too. I really want to get a mid shield, so we do this. Then we explode. Uh oh. Woo! That was a close one. We explode yellow gems. <coughs> wow, excuse me. Uh, then we do this. Add one more cost. It, that's a match. A uh, little bit a uh, close one, but hey, we won. And then we travel back to the mainland with Marashi Expanse and Sinta Restriction. This is kind of interesting. Uh, first time with a Sinta Restriction. And um, I actually had to test quite a lot over here before I found something that I really like. Um, Super using Wand of Stars, of course. Very good mana generator. And uh, then we're using Centurion. It can devour enemies, but is kind of a backup mana generator if we lose one of stars. Uh, we're using Sagittarian. Uh, Divine Centaur Mythic Troops from Divinium Fields. Uh, deals pretty hefty true damage to an enemy and then steals either 10 magic or 20 life or 20 armor from an enemy. Um, summons a light storm at the start of the battle and Celestial Arrow uh, trait gives a Jew magic to all yellow allies when matching yellow gems. Right. And in the last slot, we are using Oneros. We don't have any summoning options here, so Oneros is pretty much perfect troops over here. Uh, drains 7 mana from all enemies and inflicts Fairy Fire and Burst in. Then summon 1, 2 or 3 Nightmares. So we really want to f uh, Fairy Fire the enemies so that we can deal 1.5 amount of your magic uh, worth of damage on the enemies with Sagittarian. Uh, we're using Elementalist so that we can uh, stun nasty troops like this. Matron Dragotani has Arcane Resistance trait that reduces damage from spells by 75%. That is annoying as heck, but if you can uh, stun this troop, that uh, trait won't help her at all. Hippolyta, one of these journey troops, creates three green gems boost by Sanctuary allies. Uh, place Hunter's Mark on enemies when do his skull damage. 50% chance to ignore armor with skull damage. I would place another one of these up top for random skull poach. Um, but anyway, let's go and try how we fare. So we want to get our Wand of Stars going right off the bat and then get that fairy fire in and then deal heavy true damage with our Sagittarian. Pretty nice. A uh, extra turn over there and we don't do they use they use elementalist but we dodge the snap freeze. Nice. We do that. Do we have extra turns? I think uh, I think not. So let's cast our Wand of Stars. We do that. And that as well. I think we are going to cast Wand one more time to generate mana to our Oneros. Uh, funnily enough, their hero isn't uh, entangled yet, but that's fine. We are barriered. So what we do now, we are going to cast on errors, then we cast a uh, Zagitarian there. Now we could generate mana with our Centurion. Actually, we are going to do that, but I prefer to keep a Centurion loaded if I can cast Wand of Stars. But actually, uh, when I think about it, if you have a granted extra turn, take it. We are doing cast over here. Mother Dragon is going or gone. Now, mm, not very good. Elemental stars board. Plenty of yellow and purple. I think we are going with the umbrella stars. Fingers crossed. Maybe I missed this. I think we did. No, we got the extra turn. That's nice. Uh, do we have extra turn? Is there? And there. There's a skull poke. Now we do a cast over there. And. There's an extra turn, blue extra turn, it's something, but as you cast uh, said Shuriken, it will generate mana mostly to all your troops. I think it's okay, this lineup. What do you think? And the circle is full, we're going to South Foiled with green restriction this week. Uh, we're trying something different today. Uh, okay, we're, using, uh, we're fighting against Stella team with Wand of Stars and Leprechaun. Uh, so are we, Wand of Stars, Undine. Stellarix and Leprechaun. 
The reason why I brought Undine over here is that uh, he will submerge all blue allies and silence all blue enemies. I think that's pretty nice because all the uh, important enemy troops are blue, so we are going to silence Stellas and Wand of Stars as long as they are blessed, of course, and uh, we can um, submerge our important blue troops like Wonder of Stars and Stellarix. So if they get going some way, we are at least submerged and we can dodge the AoE damage unless they curse us. But the way this uh, enemy Wonder of Stars works is that if, if let's say that I cast my um, Wonder of Stars and I pick the Elemental Stars option, then I miss, the enemy will spam the Elemental Stars option uh, like eternally. That's how these are coded. But if I cast the Umbral Stars option and I miss, the enemy will start spamming the Umbral Stars option and it will do that eternally until you pick the Elemental Stars option. So basically, the enemy uh, Wonder Stars is doing what you did last time or will, what option you cast last time with this Wonder Stars. Anyway, let's go and try if we can get our Undine going, can silence the enemies and submerge our blue allies. Uh, it's it's pretty good to keep in mind that if the enemy isn't using blue troops, then your Undine isn't doing anything. But this is my Stella counter this week. Let's explode the board. So does the enemy and their Stella is going. We are going to do that. Then we are putting our fingers crossed. No, that's not an extra turn. Not, not, not very good board. We could try and cast our Stella, but um, I really want to cast one of stars first. Come on, come on, come on! Oh no! This is a. This is. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, now I have to cast Celerix. And that's really nice. Wow. Okay, now we can silence their blue troops and submerge our troops. Undine cast, get in. There. And now we are uh, in a more uh, better position for sure. We can take that, get rid of the top enemy and cast our Stellarix over there. Uh, then we cast our Wound of Stars and get rid of the last enemy. Wow, that was a close one. But that's how it goes. Um, it seems I'm going to be able to win about um, 1 to 10 or maybe in a purple region or brown region one out of uh, Excuse me. I'm talking nonsense. I was talking about the losing um, It seems that in a green or yellow or red I lose one out of ten of these Stella fights and uh, in a brown or purple region I usually lose one out of 20 matches or so on. Anyway, the point I'm babbling over here is that sometimes you are just going to lose and you gotta just suck it up and keep going. That's about it for this week. Have a great week, my friend. And um, the usual stuff, hey, comment, like, subscribe. Hats is off. Peace out.